You're watching World Insights. I'm James Chow, and we're here together for 30 minutes as we look back at some of the stories that have made the headlines in the past seven days. Lots to get through over these next 30 minutes, so let's get started now with our first report. We begin by going back one month when the Hamas military commander was murdered in a Dubai hotel. Last weekend, the chief of the Dubai police at Mossad, the Israeli intelligence agency, was involved in that assassination. Israel is coming under growing pressure from Hamas and also from Europe. The killing is fanning the flames of hatred between the Israelis and the Palestinians, and as we see now, sowing the seeds of new regional conflicts. When Hamas commander Mahmoud al mabrou landed in Dubai on January the 19th, death was waiting for him. A hit squad had flown in from various countries. They divided into teams, some for surveillance of the target, some to keep a lookout, and one for the killing. Some wore disguises using fake beards and wigs. When Al Mabrou checked in at the Bustan Rotana, at least one suspect stood close to him, trying to overhear his room number. Two others tailed him to confirm it. Al Mabrou had asked for a room with no balcony for security reasons. The killer booked the room opposite. Al Mabrou left the hotel in the early evening. He returned to his room at around 9 p.m and was then murdered. Al Mapu was the Hamas official in charge of arms purchases and was a founder of the Hamas military wing, Izzadin Kassam. The 50-year-old Hamas commander also was involved in the kidnappings and murders of two Israeli soldiers in 1989. Mossad had been hunting him ever since. He had escaped two assassinations. Just six months ago, he was poisoned and remained unconscious for 30 hours. This time, Omapu wasn't so lucky. For days, it appeared he died of a heart attack. But lab analysis indicated he was poisoned and electrocuted. Last weekend, Dubai's police chief said the investigation pointed almost certainly to the Israeli intelligence agency, Mossad. Gaza is observing 40 days of mourning. Hamas is out for blood. The decision of revenge for the leader El Mapu has been taken and it will be equal to the crime and you killers have nothing to do but wait. The photographs of suspects and the names they used have been placed on Interpol's most wanted list. All of them entered Dubai with stolen or forged passports. Britain and Ireland summoned Israel's ambassadors. And we hope and expect that they will cooperate fully with the investigation that has been launched by the Prime Minister and is being undertaken by the Serious and Organised Crime Agency. Well, I'm very angry about it and I'm very concerned. It's a very, very serious issue. It puts the security of Irish citizens at risk. Paul John Keeley is one of those who had his identity stolen. What can I say? It's a shock. My life is shocked. Can I not visit my parents now because someone is using my name? <laughs> French Foreign Minister Bernard Kouchner also condemned the assassination and even suggests recognizing a Palestinian state. Some say Mossad has scored a tactical success, but a strategic failure. Israel will pay a big political and diplomatic price. Muslim migrants in the UK and France account for more than 5% of the country's total population. There are about 50 million Muslims living in Europe. Mossad's operation will surely stir up their dissatisfaction and have a negative impact on the relationship between Israel and Europe. The agents have left, but their movements were recorded. And that's put Mossad, one of the world's four leading intelligence agencies, under severe scrutiny. The name Mossad is short for the Institute for Intelligence and Special Operations in Hebrew. The agency had about 1,200 members. All of them go through intense training, such as getting a stranger's name, address, and even bank card number in under 15 minutes. 
One of the agency's greatest achievements was capturing the architect of the Holocaust, Adolf Eichmann. In 1960, Mossad agents entered Argentina with fake passports and brought Eichmann to Israel. Two years later, Eichmann was convicted and executed by hanging. Rafi Aitan was head of that Mossad operation. If we wanted to kill him, we could kill him quite easily. But we wanted to take him into trial, and that's much more difficult. But Mossad hasn't always succeeded. At the 1972 Olympics in Germany, Black September, a Palestinian militant group, killed 11 Israeli athletes and coaches. It became known as the Munich Massacre. Israel began its revenge. In 1973, in Lillehammer, Norway, Mossad agents killed a Rom man, a Moroccan who had no connection to the attack. Five agents were caught and imprisoned. Throughout the years, Mossad earned himself a reputation of efficient and ruthless uh, intelligence agency with, quote, license to kill. Another spectacular failure was an attempt to poison Hamas leader Kelat Meshal in Jordan in 1997. The agents were caught. Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli Prime Minister both then and now, was forced to send the antidote and release Hamas's spiritual leader, Sheikh Yassin. The Mossad chief at the time, Danny Yatom, does not regret ordering the hit. No, I'm not sorry at all. I think that no terrorist can enjoy any immunity and they should know exactly that uh, the free world will chase them if they continue to execute terror attacks. As technology develops, missions abroad become increasingly difficult for Mossad. Critics say this time, Mossad underestimated the ability of the Dubai police. The current head of Mossad, May Dagan, is remaining silent. But the media keeps digging. The British newspaper Sunday Times reviewed Netanyahu met with Dagan and approved the mission in early January. The team had already rehearsed using a hotel in Tel Aviv. Saudi Arabia's Middle East newspaper calls Israel's move a strong signal aimed at Iran because Omar Pou was allegedly in Dubai to help smuggle weapons from Iran into Gaza. Indeed, Israel revealed some advanced rockets were smuggled into Gaza, and Israel paid close attention. Israel always considers Iran to be its greatest threat. Iran's escalating nuclear issue has further strained their relations. Early this month, Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad ordered to begin production of 20% enriched uranium. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu called for an immediate embargo. This is what is required now. It may not do the job, but nothing else will. And at least we will have known that it's been tried. And if this cannot pass in the Security Council, then it should be done outside the Security Council, but immediately. A week before the Dubai assassination, Iranian nuclear physicist Professor Masood Ali Mohammadi was killed by a bomb-rigged motorcycle parked outside his home. Critics have pointed the finger at Mossad. And Israel's allies are publicly condemning the killing in Dubai. Missions meant to bring security are instead leaving a mess and raising the stakes. Well, let's look at the backdrop to all this because Israel is facing a challenge not just from the Palestinians but also from Iran's nuclear threat plus hostility from Syria's Hezbollah and other Arab countries. Where the peace talks will restart and how that situation will unfold in the Middle East is anybody's guess. Up next, an IOU for the European Union. Can the Eurozone afford to keep Greece in the money?